the PlayStation Portal came out four months ago today. Time flies. And I was lucky enough to get it on day one, which means I have had a ton of time to test this out to find out is it really worth $200. So let's get straight into it because no messing about, this is going to be a raw video telling you exactly what I think. First off, hardware. It's pretty good, not gonna lie. This is a premium feeling device. Feels really good in your hands. The screen, you can't ignore the screen. The screen is beautiful. It is probably the nicest LCD screen I've ever seen. I know it's not OLED, but it absolutely pops. It looks fantastic. As you can see there though, there's a bit of glare, bit of reflections, which is not ideal if you're outside or in a really bright environment. So just keep that in mind. The rest of the stuff, like the actual controller, is just top notch. What you expect from the DualSense, if you've used one, if you've already got a PlayStation 5, which I imagine you will if you're looking at this, because remember, you need a PlayStation 5 for this to work. It is just a remote play device, but the adaptive triggers are just fantastic. The haptic feedback is top notch. All the buttons feel great. The sticks are slightly smaller than the DualSense, I don't think you'll notice it, but they're ever so slightly smaller, but they feel great. I've used them on every type of game, and all of you who play FPS games, you'll be fine with these sticks. It'll feel very similar to the DualSense. Even though I don't recommend you play FPS games, well, play FPS games, but not competitively on this, because we'll get to that later. So, other hardware things. What about the battery life? It's pretty good. I think I probably get around about four to five hours when I'm playing with this. I do find though I'm charging it after every single use um, because once the battery drains down part of the way, you pick it up to play and then before you know it, you're almost out of juice. So that probably could be a little bit better, but I don't know. Do you sit and play games on your handheld for four or five hours over that? I don't. Usually I play for about an hour or two and then charge it and we're good to go the next day. Other things to be aware of with the hardware, it is really annoying there's no Bluetooth built in to the PlayStation Portal, which I don't know why, well, I do know why Sony did this, so they could sell you their Explorer earbuds, um, but that's just annoying. It just reminds me of back in the day with the Vita when they had uh, their proprietary memory sticks, which were really expensive and kind of switched a lot of people off. I think if they just made it, you could use your Bluetooth speakers or your Bluetooth uh, earphones, sorry. People would have really liked that and appreciated it. They could have even just done some cool PlayStation branded ones, which probably would have flown off the shelves instead of these really expensive $200 ones, which cost the same as the PlayStation Portal. I don't know. They'll say there's something about it with it being lossless audio and, you know, so it syncs up perfectly with the gameplay, but... I've never had problems with Bluetooth headphones on any other device, you know, playing on your mobile, for example. So I don't know, but I think that's a bit of a miss. That would be cool to see in future versions of this. Other things, the sticks, as awesome as they are, we do know a lot of people have had stick drift problems with the actual DualSense controller. It would have been cool to see these be interchangeable and replaceable like the DualSense Edge controller because this is a $200 device and I mean it looks great, it is great, I really like it but if these sticks end up going you've got like a $200 paperweight so that's a bit unfortunate. Time will only tell how that goes, so far it might have been perfect. I've probably used this near enough every other day for four months so it is going good guns so far so thumbs up and fingers crossed that remains also with the actual hardware the comfort this is the comfiest handheld type gaming device i've ever used it just fits perfectly in your hands it's the screen is amazing size for immersion you get right into the game the sticks the buttons feel great you access to everything on your playstation as you'd expect just by pressing the home button just remember it is just a remote play device there's nothing too fancy in terms of the actual interface on the portal it's super super basic you don't have a lot of features really really kind of minimum operating system if you'd even call it that but that's what you want 
it's literally pick up and play, jump on into your games and away you go. Let's talk about actually having this device, what it's like to live with. And one thing I have noticed is I'm playing my PlayStation 5 a lot more now. Um, it's just really cool that, for example, my wife can be sitting watching something on the TV and I can be sitting next to her playing a game on my PlayStation portal and it's absolutely awesome. It, it just works great for me. I've had literally hardly any problems with it. We'll discuss the one or two problems I have had at the end, but it, it's just really, really good. It's a really unique experience and I think a lot of people will actually get benefit from this. So I think about people who have a really busy household, so think maybe kids, family, whatever it is, they're using the TV or the TV's always busy, which your PlayStation is connected to. You can just fire up your portal and play the games while they're watching whatever they want on the TV. It is really, really cool. And I think a lot of people don't appreciate this until they get it. And for me, for example, <laughs> the, the place I play this the most, you may laugh, but I play this in the bath all the time. If I'm going up to have a bath and lie in there and soak for a while, used to just sit there, you know, on social media, on your phone, whatever. Now, I take my portal and I've been playing Death Stranding in the bath and it's freaking awesome. I love it. Just don't drop your portal, otherwise it will probably go bye-bye. But yeah, so I've been playing it a lot more. Really, really like it. What about the negative chat you see online as if, oh, this thing sucks, it doesn't work, it's this, it's that. I honestly think a lot of people don't really know what they're buying when they get this. I think a lot of people look at this as you would and think, oh, it's a PlayStation 5 portable. But it's not. It's not like a Nintendo Switch. It's not like a Steam Deck. It is not an actual handheld gaming device. It is a remote play device only. That's all it does. If you don't have internet or a good internet and network connection, you do nothing with this. Like, for real, you do nothing. It, it just does nothing. Remember that, absolutely nothing. But if you do have a good network in your home, that is definitely key. This thing is amazing. Mine works fantastic. Um, the only thing I did at the start which made a huge difference was I hardwired my PlayStation 5 to the internet via an, an ethernet cable and that made a massive difference. At the start, there was one or two drop-offs I noticed. Since I've done that, there's been less drop-offs than I have fingers. So in four months, less than 10 times this thing's cut off. But it's on you to find out if your internet connection and your network is suitable for this because there's so many different you know, network connections people have, different service providers. So try and find out, run some speed tests, see how it's looking and where you'd be playing this and then give it a go. If it doesn't work, return it. But for me, it has been fantastic. Now, let's talk about digital games versus physical games. Hmm, this is a big thing which... I wasn't really aware of until getting the portal, but whenever I buy PlayStation 5 games, I like to support physical media. So I always buy the physical discs. So I've got like the physical God of War, I've got the physical, um, what's it called? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, Horizon Forbidden West, all that kind of stuff. You know, I like that because I don't like the idea of an all digital future where we just download stuff you know, kids can't get video games and consoles for Christmas because it's all just like in the cloud. That just, ugh, that sucks. I don't like that. But when you have a portal, that's not the best way to be playing your games. If you do not have a PlayStation Plus subscription or a lot of digital games, ugh, digital games, easy for me to say, you might want to give this a miss. So I let my PlayStation Plus expire to do a little bit of an experiment. And when you're playing games on your PlayStation, which are digital, they're downloaded, it's really easy. You can be sitting on the sofa and decide, I'm going to change to this game. So you just, you know, pop out to the menu and then go into the switcher and just switch your game and boom, like that, you know, play. Well, there we go. We're playing Death Stranding now. Done. We went from Wipeout to Death Stranding. Easy. If you have physical games, you need to actually go and then you need to change the disc. Now, I might be making more out of this than it is, but it's a pain in the ass 
when you when you're setting chilling playing on your portal and then you need to go and change the desk on your playstation now i might be unique with this but my playstation 5 is not in my house so I'm playing the portal in my house and then if I want to actually change the physical game, if it's a disc I'm playing, I need to go to my PlayStation 5 and change the disc, which is just, I can't be bothered doing. So keep that in mind. But if you have PlayStation Plus and you've got loads of games downloaded to your library or you buy all your games digitally, you will be sorted with this. It's so easy. You just select the games you want to play. If they're already downloaded, play them. If not, download them to your PlayStation 5 and away you go. Speaking of games, let's talk about the best type of games to play on your portal. Let's get this out of the way. I do not recommend you play fast-paced first-person shooters competitively on this. So if you're usually someone who plays Call of Duty and you throw your controller off the wall when you get smoked, do not buy this because you'll be smashing it to bits in no time. There is obviously delay and slight lag because this is a remote play device. But if you're playing first person shooter games like Doom, you know, Quake, even the Call of Duty campaigns, it is fine only for competitive multiplayer first person shooter games. I don't recommend it. You're at a disadvantage to someone who's just playing on their PlayStation on a high refresh rate monitor on a hardwired connection versus you, which is playing from the internet through a connection to your portal and then back again to your PlayStation and then out to the internet. So keep that in mind, but then playing all the other games PlayStation is renowned for, all the adventure games, they're just fantastic. So Spider-Man's amazing on this, uh, Death Stranding's amazing on this, Horizon Forbidden West and Zero Dawn are amazing on this. Even like I've been playing Wipeout, uh, it runs amazing on it. Uh, everybody's golf I've been loving playing um, what other games you've got like your Gran Turismo your Assetto Corsa all of these games Lego 2K Racing all the games work great honestly it's just fantastic just watch out for games where you're playing them competitively and it means something to you this is not the place to do it everything else you will have an absolute blast trust me as long as your network and your internet connection is up to speed. One thing that is definitely missing from this also is the ability to watch media. So you cannot watch your Disney Plus, your Netflix, your Amazon, your Apple TV, your YouTube. You can't watch it on your PlayStation portal, which is kind of weird. I don't know why that has not been enabled. Must be some sort of licensing thing, but fingers crossed that gets added in future. Surely that must just be an update getting pushed to the portal and then you can watch all of your content on this beautiful 8-inch LCD screen. Speaking of other things that is missing, which I really hope they add in the future, and I've read interviews that this device is capable of it, is cloud game streaming from PlayStation Plus. You cannot stream your games from PlayStation Plus straight to this device. That would be really cool if they did that, supposedly, that's something it can do. So maybe they'll enable it in the future or maybe they'll hold it back for the PlayStation Portal Pro or 2. Who knows? But I think that would be really, really cool and that would be an absolute game changer for this device. I think a lot of people would be wanting to get their hands on it. Even more so, even though it's already sold out everywhere all the time, even more people would be wanting some PlayStation Portal action. Now, you might not only be playing games in your home. What about if you're playing away from home? Well, I took this on vacation right away when I got it and it worked really, really well. So keep that in mind. If you can connect to a hotel's Wi-Fi connection, you can play your games on your portal. If you cannot connect to the hotel's Wi-Fi, connect to your mobile phone and use it as a mobile hotspot and you will be sorted. It works really well. I've played games on 4G connections and 5G connections and it works really, really well. I was playing Cyberpunk on holiday. I was playing Wipeout. I was playing Resogun. You name it, it worked really, really well. And speaking of that, there is a video which you can check out, which I'll leave to pop up on screen right now. And I may as well tell you right now, this is absolutely worth $200 if you've got a good enough internet connection and network setup. 
check it out. If you like it, let me know down below in the comments. If you don't, let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about it. And we'll see you on the next one.